Good morning, everybody. It's November the 12th, the day after Remembrance Day. And hopefully everybody had a chance to celebrate or at least take time to remember the sacrifices yesterday. And much has been spoken on that already from different pastors in different ways. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an important thing because sacrifice is a big part of the, the Christian walk. But this morning, I, I just want to touch on what's been happening in the world, especially what's been happening in the Philippines. And you'd have to be without a heart not to be moved by the images that we see coming out of that, that devastation. And we can sit and we can look at the, the, the humanity of it. We see the, the buildings, the timber, uh, those two ships. That's just amazing to see those sitting there. Uh, but then you see the piles of bodies, and piles of bodies. And I'm sure all of you have seen the image of the, the young dad carrying the, the child. I'll tell you, I woke up to that this morning went to check the news and I saw that and I wept and I wept and how could I not weep I mean I have 11 children I cannot imagine losing one of them and there he walked through the devastation with the limp body of his daughter in his arms and we just the compassion that wells up in us but sometimes it can be so great and so overwhelming that we, we try to distance ourselves from it and we can't we can't because we also have to remember in this country, this beautiful country filled with such a, an amazing uh, group of people. There's nothing like uh, the Filipinos. Kind, compassionate, merciful, humble, uh, just generous, generous to a fault. Uh, people who have, when you read their history, who have faced so much and gone through so much and have suffered so much. And yet there is a faith there, there is a people there, there is a spirit that is rising up and, and uh, just penetrating the country in, in, in an incredible way and you can't help but be moved by that. So when we look at those images, we have to realize that those, a lot of those people are our brothers and sisters in the Lord. They are brothers and sisters in Christ. Those are churches that have been destroyed, the congregations have been overwhelmed and there's so much destruction. And Paul tells us, and, 1 Corinthians 12, that in the body we rejoice with those who rejoice, but we also mourn with those who mourn. And we can feel their loss, the loss of family, the loss of what they've known, the, so much loss in that place, such compassion. But we're also told by Paul again in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, that we have a responsibility to encourage one another. He says that because of Christ's death, we have this responsibility to one another. In just a couple of verses, let me just read it here. And it says, Christ died for us so that we could live with him, whether we are alive or dead when he comes. That's why you must encourage and help each other, just as you are already doing. He gave us that charge. To encourage and help one another. You know that Paul went around and he took up a collection for the believers in Jerusalem. And some would say it was because they were in a, a destitute uh, situation. Uh, you know, the persecution that came upon the church came at the hands of Paul. And here he was gathering up. But it wasn't a matter of, of the church being in a destitute situation. It was... It was an honoring. It was an honoring of the birthplace, of, of where it all happened, where Christ ministered and where the church was born and went out from. And so he gathered them up and he told them that even, even in their needs, they were able to give because of who Christ is. The church in the Philippines need our help right now. God wants to equip them to minister where they need to minister. And I want to encourage you, no matter what your needs are, that you set those aside and you consider for a moment what it is that you can seed into the church, into that ministry right now. There are some great Christian organizations that are working on the ground there, working with local churches. I encourage you to discover them. And... Here I also want to challenge you not to question once you have given your gift. 
there are so many who criticize the church. They, they give their money, they give their tithes and offerings, and they think that they have a say in what should happen to that. But those are gifts that are given to the Lord. Those are gifts that are given up to God. And there's leadership that has been put in place. And you have to trust God. And if they do wrong, then they will be corrected. When we give over to the organizations, we can't criticize them. You know, they, they, there is a percentage that has to go to their upkeep, to the, to the mechanism that they have in place, because it takes a lot to mobilize people and to get supplies and, and monies transferred and all that needs to take place. So if they need 10% for their own operations, then God bless them. But they're there, and they've got people on the ground, and they can help. We would love to gather uh, these dear suffering people into our own arms and just comfort them and encourage them. But we can pray for them and we can give. We can give. We can give. And we need to give. So I encourage you today, as you spend the time with the Lord, listen to the Spirit, hear what He is putting upon your heart, and give. Give generously. Give out of your own need. God will take care of you. Just trust Him. And pray for these deeper, dear people, especially the church, that they will be equipped to do God's work.